President Donald Trump signed his travel ban today, version 2.0. His first travel ban against a group of majority Muslim countries got held up by a federal appeals court. Most of the same countries remain on the list in the new version. Nine News political reporter Brandon Redman joining us to explain what has changed. Brandon. Hey, Ryan. In many ways, the new version of this order is a cleanup of the first, designed to remove barriers the first version put in the way of people who already had clearance to be in the U.S. But the courts had some other concerns, and it's not clear whether this one will be held up if challenged like the first one was. The first version of the travel ban blocked entry to the U.S. from Libya, Sudan, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia, and Iran. In version 2, Iraq is removed from that list. That's because it has a working relationship with the U.S. and it's improving its documentation, according to the president's new executive order. By signing that order, the president trimmed back his indefinite ban on Syrian refugees. Now it's a 120-day ban, which can be renewed. The order now contains specific language allowing people to re-enter the U.S. if they already had authorization to be in the country and left for a legal purpose. That avoids some of the hardships the courts took issue with. The Trump administration thinks travel ban 2.0 should hold up to a court challenge. The Department of Justice believes that this executive order, just as the first executive order, is a lawful and proper exercise of presidential authority. Washington state, which sued to block the first version, hinted it may still have a problem. President Trump campaigned on a promise to enact a Muslim ban. And that backdrop was flagged by the courts as a concern, that it can appear the administration is going with this policy as a way to target people of the Muslim faith. The Washington state attorney general says they're still worried about that. The intent behind the original order is of deep concern to us. This was motivated uh, uh, in part by the administration uh, to target predominantly Muslim countries. So we still have concerns about that intent, that yes, this is a new order, but this is, there's a continuation here. So the bottom line is we're going to have to wait and see if this version ends up in court, and if so, whether the Court of Appeals would directly take on this accusation of targeting a specific religion. The Ninth Circuit Court declined to weigh in on that part last time, but did note that it's something worth looking into. Ryan, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. So, Brandon, while we've got you, one big talker over the weekend was over these allegations by President Trump that then-President Obama had ordered Trump Tower to be wiretapped. Does the White House have any actual proof to back up those wiretapping claims? Well, Ryan, no, they didn't have proof this weekend. They don't have proof today. This remains a totally unsupported claim from President Trump. The president tweeted over the weekend that President Obama did something on par with the Watergate scandal by targeting candidate Trump with wiretaps. The White House said that was based on news reports, what President Trump said. Factcheck.org got a list of five articles from the White House, none of which suggest President Obama targeted now President Trump. Former CIA and NSA director General Michael Hayden told MSNBC Today that what President Trump accused his predecessor of isn't possible. So, Joe, if you take literally what the president tweeted, the plumbing just doesn't work that way. It could not, if something happened, it couldn't, could not have happened the way the president said it, that the president of the United States directed surveillance on someone. He hasn't been able to do that since the mid-1970s. You've got to go to an Article Three judge. You've got to have probable cause that the target of the surveillance is either an agent of a foreign power or is very likely involved in criminal activity. So... On its face, that's just incorrect. Look, there are three possibilities here. One, President Obama actually did what President Trump says, and this is the actual Watergate scandal all over again. Two, something kind of like what President Trump is saying happened, happened, but wasn't actually ordered by President Obama, which would raise all kinds of questions. Or three, it's an accusation that's all made up. Trouble is, there's no evidence to back up possibilities one and two. So for now, many Trump supporters are going to choose to believe this because it's coming from the president's mouth. And a lot of other people are going to move on like it's all make-believe and the president's just crying wolf here, right? A busy Monday for you, my friend. Thanks for staying on top of it. Thank you. All right.